Having a wireless system is a great way to add flexibility to your live concerts, presentations, and events. Today, I'm going to take a look at the X5 U3 XLR wireless system for microphone and line level signals. So let's check it out. Now I'll be using the Shure SM57 dynamic microphone for this review. I've chosen it because I think it's fairly representative of the kind of mics you'd plug into a system like this, and it's fairly demanding. I also suggest that you wear headphones so that you can hear the audio test throughout the review. In the interest of full transparency, I'll tell you that X5 did send me this U3 kit for review, but I haven't been compensated in any way. X5 has no input on the review. My opinions are my own, and they will not see this video before you do. Now, taking a look at the packaging, there's quality here right off the bat. Some good information here, and we have a sleeve outside of an inner box. The inner box is a nice quality material, and we can see a foam insert here to protect the receiver and transmitter. We'll pull them out. They're also individually wrapped. When we remove the foam sleeve, we'll see the accessories underneath. Starts out with a USB cable. It's USB-A to dual micro USB-C. I would have liked to have seen USB-C ports on both the transmitter and receiver, but since there's a purpose-built solution here, I'm okay with that. We also get a, a warranty card and a manual, everything we need that way. And there's a storage carrying pouch inside, and that's really nice to have when we have a kit like this that's likely to get used in a mobile environment. Now, looking at the transmitter, we can see there's a power switch and a microphone line selection switch, as well as a channel selector. Then we have the receiver. It's got a power switch. Both these units have built-in rechargeable batteries and six-channel operation. And I have to say that when I unbox the kit, the quality is very good. The switches all feel really solid, connecting both the transmitter and receiver up to the ports on the mic and interface. Again, everything worked really well. So pleased to see that. Now I have the SM57 connected up through the U3 system into the Scarlett AT9i20. I have the gain set at three o'clock. I'm gonna be using this configuration throughout the review unless I tell you otherwise. But in order to hear kind of the audio, I'm monitoring it. It's a little hard to tell, of course, when you're speaking yourself. But overall, I have to say that I'm getting about the level I would expect here. Sounds really about the same as I would get with a wired connection. So I'm really pleased with that so far. Now, being a wireless system, one of the first things you think about is what's the range like. So we'll take it outside and do a line of sight test. We'll again use the Shure SM57. I'm going to use a pop filter on it. But this time for recording, I'm going to use a Tascam DR60D Mark II portable recorder. And this is a test of the range. We'll see if we're getting the maximum 100 foot range out of the U3. Now X5 tells us this kit has about a 90 foot operating range. I tested it outside at 100 feet and as you could hear, there were no issues. Now I also wanted to do a comparison of wired versus wireless. So I took the SM57, I connected it up with an XLR cable. And as you can see, I had about 71, almost 72 dB of separation between the vocal signal and the noise floor compared to the 60 dB using the wireless system. So the wired system was quieter, no question, about 12 dB actually lower noise floor. But again, 60 dB separation with the wireless system is all we need for good audio. And of course, noise floor isn't only about the amplitude, but it's also about the frequencies. So I also did spectrum analysis on all of the channels. And again, I established a baseline. We have a vocal sample showing really where the frequency response is through my vocal range. And looking at the wireless channels, they're all very similar. And, and comparing the frequencies, you know, we have a lot of separation really anywhere up until even about 10 kilohertz, especially, you know, up to about 4.5 or 5 kilohertz. Above 10, we start to get less separation between the noise floor and, and the recording of my voice. But that's again, because I have fewer of those frequencies in my voice. So overall here, nothing alarming. You know, we're not getting any sudden interference spikes at any frequencies on any of the channels. So this is performing very well. So I did some tests on all the channels using 150 ohm resistor as the load replacing a microphone. And we can see that the baseline on the Scarlett at 20 was minus 86.14 dB RMS. And that was at a gain of three o'clock. Now on each of the wireless channels with everything set the same on the at 20 we have around minus 78.53 to minus 78.35. So we're getting about another seven and a half dB of noise floor here, but still very respectable. Now, I also did a vocal recording, keeping everything the same except using the SM57, and we had max RMS of minus 16.66. And what this shows us is we have about 60 dB of separation between the noise floor and the recording going through the microphone. And that's plenty of room any day to give us good quality audio. I should also tell you that 
I have a pretty robust Wi-Fi system in my house, Ubiquity and otherwise. So there's a lot of Wi-Fi signals going on here and really all six of the channels perform very well. Now, another feature of the U3 wireless system is it's able to transfer line level signals as well as mic level signals. So to test that out, I went ahead and connected an XLR cable up from the SM57. I've got it going into the UA to Infinity 710 preamp. And then the line out on the preamp is actually being sent via the U3 wireless system back to my Focusrite Scarlett 18i20. And so this would be a great application if you had a remote mixer somewhere in a house or a concert venue and you want to send the signal back to a main PA system. Of course, this is mono, it's only one channel. You'd need two of them if you want to send a stereo signal along, but it just illustrates another way you could use this system where maybe instead of running a long 100 or 200 foot cable, you could just go ahead and use the wireless. Now, I've gone ahead and connected up a couple of cables here so we can take a look at the transmitter and receiver in action. And you can see that we have a blue light here and it says channel one on each one. That allows us to adjust between the six channels and you'll see that the receiver has a green light. That comes up when the two sync each other. So I'll switch the receiver to number two. And you see when I switched the transmitter to number two, the green light came back on. And so that's just a matter of working through all the way the six channels and finding the one with the least interference. Now I also have the power switch on, of course, on the receiver, if we turn that off. Turning it back on, you see it automatically syncs up right away. On the transmitter side, the same thing. If I turn the power off, syncs up right away. And then we have a mic and line switch. And that's just for adjusting the level that we have as an input here. Of course, I'm using the SM57 now, but if we want to go ahead and use this to move sound over from a mixer or any other kind of line level audio equipment, we just put it in line mode and we can do that. Now, one of the nice things about having the power switch on the transmitter is that if your microphone doesn't have a switch, that allows you to turn it off and on. So you have that mutability, and certainly there wasn't a loud pop in the audio chain. So that's a nice to have. Now I'll have a link to full specifications in the description below, but a few key things to keep in mind here are battery life. They're rated for up to about five hours between charges, and I found that to be very accurate. It takes about two hours for a full charge from completely dead battery. So uh, again, that's something that... Uh, you know, is, is really usable. Five hours, no issues with that whatsoever. Uh, they have quite a large dynamic range as well, 110 dB dynamic range. And uh, as we tested earlier, the operating range absolutely lived up to uh, what was uh, said and even more. So now that we've had a chance to go through all the tests on the U3 wireless kit, I'm gonna give you my final thoughts. In terms of performance, when I look at operating range, you know, we exceeded the specification. And so that's really good. 100 feet of operating range without any issues. We have six channels to work with. When I tested the noise floor on the channels, you know, it was very low. We experienced around minus 78 dB. And given that we could get a signal of up around minus 16 with those settings, that's 60 dB of separation. That's plenty to allow you to make great live vocals or recordings, so no issue there. Frequency response tests, again, in the noise floor, excellent. There were no spike frequencies, no problematic issues to deal with. The noise floor was very consistent. So again, really happy to see that. You know, and at the time of recording, this unit here is available for around 200 US dollars. And given that performance, given that it works with any XLR microphone, again, dynamic or ribbon, this doesn't provide phantom power. If you need phantom power, they make a kit for that or I didn't show it, but you could also insert a phantom power unit between the transmitter and the microphone if you really needed to use this kit with that. So that's an option. The line level test using the UA710 preamp and the 18i20 interface to give you that idea of a remote mixer and house PA system. Absolutely, the line level transmission worked very well also. So I've got to say there's good value here. I think, you know, if you're looking for a wireless kit, especially one that's going to work with any XLR microphone, this is one you should definitely have on your list. Having that wireless flexibility really opens up opportunities for live performance and production. And if you're looking for other ways to level up your live or recorded audio, check out one of the other videos on the screen.